Somewhere east, uh, sorry, west of center, those where the Chicago becomes this boring stretch city, whatever, not in the uh, skyscraper domain. So you can, uh, but the problem is that it doesn't, uh, uh, the problem is that it doesn't, sorry? It's on, it's on line. Yeah, 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 of course you can do it online, but that's the sad thing that if you go there, you just get a catalog with names. You know, you Can don't you get... About, no, no, I mean I'm downloading the film. Ah, call back. Yeah. Ah, that's true. Maybe you, can, you get many of the things on YouTube. That's true, yes. But you know which is the absolute melodrama? I analyze it. In between his Nazi stuff, White Harlan did three melodramas, Golden Star, Golden City, Imense, and this my favorite opera gun, Sacrifice, Sacrificial Gang. Which are, I think, especially the last one, one of the most effective melodramas I've ever seen. It has the, the ultimate perfect story of sacrifice. It's, it's so incredibly well done as a melodrama. It all focuses, you see here what a woman's true love is. A guy who has a beautiful cold wife gets in love with a more lively girl and then they are, the girl gets, catches some strange illness and is maybe dying. And then the guy, they have an affair. The guy, this is the original story, the guy also dies. But the wife knows that they had a ritual because the guy was not allowed to, to, to visit his mistress because of the illness that every afternoon she, he, rode on a horse past her house where she was very ill, the mistress, and waved at her. And so after the guy dies, the wife dresses up as her husband to save the, you know, sacrifices herself to give to her the illusion that her lover is still alive, like the ultimate wife's sacrifice to personify, to embody her own husband to save the mistress and so on. It's so, it's so beautifully done. And then I analyze in detail the final shot and so on. It's breathtaking. It's breathtaking. Uh, Opfergang. Or der Opfergang. Now, uh, usually it's just translated as sacrifice. This one, unfortunately, I don't know what's the situation now. And you know, I like this about Germany. I don't know how it was when. Uh, you were in Austria, but in Germany, you know, they had this nice, when I was there for two years, code name. When you ask for Nazi films, you didn't say Nazi films, you say, do you have some historical German films? Like, no. But this didn't mean all. It meant specifically, if you meant Weimar, you said Weimar. Do you know this really good documentation from Arte um, on how the, how the neo-Nazis in Europe distribute their, their videos? I mean, I'm not no. I hope I'm not part yeah, of that because I got from my friends. You're not. <laughs> no, but let me tell you something. All my are Germans really, even the left, the neo Nazis, because all the Germans that I, uh, my German leftist friend, they say, you have this to analyze it, and then my God, they all have all the Nazi stock. I, mean, uh, I saw you, you just, I saw, uh, did you see that their Ewige Jude? That terrifying documentary on the Jews, it's really disgusting. I mean, that one is disgusting. Like, I claim if you have a minimum of decency, even if you are anti-Semitic, that movie should make you anti-anti-Semitic, no? It's a kind of a scientific documentary about the Jews, and it has all the nastiest manipulations you can imagine. For example, of course, when it was shot in 1940, where when Poland was already occupied and the Jews were condensed in, uh, how do you call it, in, 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 the, in the ghetto, no? And of course they were there poor and dirty. So the movie uses that shots to prove how the Jews live like rats and then it's like our friend Badu, Ratsman, you know? <laughs> what I like is that, like, it's horrible, is that then you have some scientist who draws a parallel, you remember this nice scene, how rats infested Europe from the Middle East and draws an exact geographic parallel between the Red invasion and the Jewish invasion and then it does some wonderful, I couldn't but laugh, it portrays all the evil Jews and so on, no? and 
they make fun of Einstein, no, calling him a relativity student. No, I like this term, at the relativity group. Because uh, I like when right-wingers get bitchy in this vulgar, funny way, like the best one, it's a nice, almost, if you want to understand what is the negation of negation, this Hegelian double movement. Uh, uh, when, you know, when Freud left Vienna, now there is a dark aspect to it, you know, when Freud in 38, you know who was the key intermediator? Marie Bonaparte. Go lower. Benito. 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 Yeah, yeah, Mussolini. And then, you know, this is what Freudians don't like to emphasize. Mussolini wrote a letter directly, not to Hitler, to that size inquart. I don't know who was the Gauleiter of Austria. And then, as a sign of gratitude, Freud sent to Mussolini a copy of Unbehagen in der Kultur, with the signature of one great mind to another great mind who admire each other. <laughs> Things happen in history, as we would put it. No? And but, but what is so nice is that on his way to England, Freud stopped for a couple of days in Paris. And one of these right-wing popular magazines have a, has a wonderful anti-Semitic outburst. They say, uh, no, sorry, I'm confused now, Dr. Lee, typically. It, this is not about Freud, but about Einstein. When Einstein left Berlin, he passed on his way to the United States through Paris. And one of these Paris shitty populist right-wing uh, 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 journals uh, had this passage, it's wonderful. They say, uh, we admit we don't understand relativity theory. We don't know what it's about. Some people claim, probably it's true, that even Einstein himself doesn't understand it. But we do understand one thing. There is now one Jew more in Paris than before. You <laughs> it's so vulgar, I mean. No, 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 I mean, it's, sorry? It gets old. Yeah, I know, I know, no, but, but I have to put it, uh, 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 it's, uh, it's interesting how this problem of how to take it, the sad thing, something unites, and here they were really bad guys, partisans of Einstein and uh, of Freud. The bad guy is here, how is he called, uh, Ernst Jones. They made a very derpy pact. Do you know that even Freud was shocked? Jones was, for me, if you ask me, the bad guy of psychoanalytic movement. He was the ultimate anti-communist conformist. You know how you can detect this? Look at uh, his... Uh, you know how he ended up? No, how? In Toronto, and he lost his license for abusing a patient. No wonder, no wonder, because he played this English gentleman and so on. But look, if you look at his uh, big official biography of Freud, uh, look at, uh, for example, you learn that he had to report this, that Freud uh, bought the famous house on Berggasse from, uh, from uh, 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 how is it called, who was the great guy? Uh, 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 from uh, 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 Bauer, Bauer family, Otto Bauer. And then you have, of course, a footnote where he says, Bauer, a well-known uh, Austrian journalist, friend of Freud. Fuck it, Bauer was the leader of the Social Democratic Party. You know, he, ob I mean, it's ridiculous. It's the same as to say Trotsky or Lenin, a journalist. Of course they were, but they were not dead. <laughs> It's the same way to say Stalin was a Soviet writer of short comments or what, no? You know, you have a whole series of censorship like this, of downplaying the link. Because even, you know, to, get, to give you another link of the depth of the connection, you know Dora, the big case, Dora. You know what's Dora's name? Ida Bauer. No? So it was all... Per so this gives you another image that Freud was even personally involved with social democratic circles. That has to disappear. The second really dark thing is that uh, 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 Jones, when the Nazis took over, Ernst Jones negotiated with the Nazis, the good guy, under quotation marks. Good guy only in the sense that he wanted nonetheless to somehow incorporate psychoanalysis was you know the story, it's a wonderfully sad story. It was, I forgot the name, the brother of Hermann Goering. 